Mars is where ancient Moors come from. So look, for those that have no understanding of history, I'll be giving you a detailed, you know, storyline of just things that, you know, be in y'all faces, but I'll just be waiting for individuals to really grasp how hidden your history is. And that it's not a joke, you feel me? When people talk about this, in the details in which they talk about interdimensional beings and an ancient past of megalithic structures, you know, telekinesis and just powers of that nature. They're not playing, but they don't want you to know that they were black. So I'm going to be starting off with describing, you know, why the Moors are from Mars and, you know, really the connections between that. So first I'll be starting off with something from Looney Tunes. They added the character Marvin the Martian. And Marvin the Martian, you notice about his skin, he's all black. He's from Mars, of course. They give him tennis shoes. They give him Nike, like um, Cortez's. No, not Cortez's. I meant Converse. They give him Converse's, which have the five-pointed star on it. You know. So, if that's not enough, Steven Spielberg said that he's hoping for George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, to really admit that his design for Darth Vader came from Marvin the Martian. Now, we know about Darth Vader. Doth. D-O-T-H. Darth Vader. For those of us that have studied this, know that the voice actor was specifically chosen for Darth Vader in the original Star Wars film to be a black man. And that's something as well that I'm going to get into. And the, you know, just... The beginning. With humanity, you had the woman, you know, running free. She's first, you know. And all of a sudden, these elongated skulls come out. You feel me? And there's ones that were found in Peru. And Peru has the megalithic structures. They have you know, just advanced technology that was there using basic um, elements, but using them to the, its full capabilities. And these skulls were found. This is not a joke. This is not a hoax. This is not fake. They have these elongated skulls. They really exist. They are you. And I credit this finding to Brian Foster, white man, but he's telling the truth. But he knows that he can't tell all of the truth. As none of these people will. But me being a melanated individual. And really having you know just. This knowledge of. Of just where we come from. You know just every. Not everything but I know that I know nothing. You feel me? And I'm telling y'all this is not a joke. They stopped testing on these skulls. On the elongated skulls that were found in Peru. They did not want them to be tested. The government. The you know it's it's. Off limits. But Brian Foster has said that they have tested, you know, secretly a scientist that he did not want to name because the scientist did not want to be named out of fear of being murdered, of course, because we know. I mean, Brian Foster doesn't have to tell me. I don't need for them to confirm this. I know that these elongated skulls were black. They were melanated. I know that. But they done testing on this and it found that it wasn't human DNA. They found no traces of human DNA when they tested these elongated skulls. So what is that saying? It's saying that these people were from a different place, obviously. And during their run, they conquered a lot of places. A lot of places. And that melanin. It lived on. And these elongated skulls were treated as royalty. 
They were looked at as royalty and the peoples, the masses that did not have this um, mass knowledge of just mathematics, astrology and just physics did not have that capability with the elongated skull and the power that it possesses. They emulated it by forming the head shapes, deforming their head shapes to try to look similar to them. For those that don't know, Aten Aten, the Pharaoh Aten Aten, which means in service to Aten, Egyptian god, was a Moor from Mars. These people were your giants. These people were your giants. But Aken Aten was a pharaoh in which was similar to JFK. Same personality. And honestly, for those that know just the spiritual realm, there will always be this spirit that gets into these positions of power that get born, re resurrected, purposely reincarnates to get into this position to become a president, knowing that this will happen in the future, just to oppose and try to bring that shift. Knowing that they will be killed for speaking out. It's a lot of these spirits in history. For those that know you really pay attention, this is a spirit that keeps reincarnating. It's the same spirit. People don't know that, though. It's a powerful spirit. But after this, I want you to realize that there's this, um, you know, at, while doing research for this, I found out that, you know, there's this character named, um, what, Martian the Manhunter for Marvel. And the Teen Titans and, you know, um, basically the whole Justice League thing. He was one of the original members. He's the only original member of the Justice League that's not white. And he is green. So when I mention green, there's two colors in particular, but there's a lot more. They disguise these people by not making them black. Because they don't want you to identify with the character and the story that's being told in front of you. Green and blue. We know about blue. Vishnu, Krishna. Meaning blue. Dark blue. Not the light blue that they portray in their paintings. The Vatsky and them that's coming in there. You feel me? I already know the history behind that. They try to hide it. It means dark skin. Dark blue. Dark black. Because it's a representation of the universe. The word black in etymology means shining light. You feel me? Glistening. Beautiful. But yet, if you look up swarthy, that give you a whole nother definition of black. But that's a whole nother era. Because the beauty, the standards of beauty have changed. It's never really changed. But in the public eye of how it's portrayed for the future generations, for those that don't do research, it changed. But for us that know, black meaning galaxy, you feel me? The stars, carbon, knowing that you possess this, the chaotic sense, you feel me? Just the creative sense, you know you have that connection because you are the original. Without blackness, everything comes from black. They know this. So, the coat of arms. In Europe, for those that don't know, all black, Switzerland, Germany, you feel me? Your 1500s, your 700s, your 400s. Black coat of arms representing these cities. Black people on the front. We know. I mean, hey, you know, it's nothing new. For the ancient, the Huns, they were described as swarthy, meaning all black, almost all black. And this was written in um, the decline of the Roman Empire, volume four. This was written talking about the Huns tribe and the Huns is supposed to be Asiatic. They had Rome shook. Almost all black, almost like all black as in the color. This is their skin tone. Hey, we've been around. This is nothing new. I'm not surprised by this at all. You have Charlotte of Mecklenburg, which is a black woman. But she has, you know. The light skin. And the light skin is um from the Moors, you know, interbreeding with white women. And this is the, you know, result of that. Now, she has the features of black women because 
Obviously, she's mixed with black. The features show the nose, the foreheads, and the lips, and even the bone structure. This doesn't look like your white woman today. So, understanding that this is a more you're looking at. This is the more in what they have become. This is a queen. Charlotte was a queen. And what individuals always fail to realize is that history is not the way that the textbooks, you know, say it is. Nothing like it. A lot of this stuff is hidden from you. They show their whole family with their features. You have to realize that this is a time in which these features were praised. The full lips, the big noses, the foreheads. A lot of people don't even know we have those foreheads. You know what I'm saying? You can tell that we, you can tell that they are black. They have that in them. There were several empires. This is towards the decline, the end. You feel me? But there were still several centuries after because they were still warring with the whites that were banding together to try to take overthrow the Moors. And the Moors didn't help themselves by interbreeding and, you know, doing this. And honestly, this is something on a cosmic level. This is a war that was happening on a cosmic level. This war between black and white goes way back, way back. And I'm going to get into that. DC Comics named Miss Martian. Obviously, they use a black woman for her voice and for the movie as well. In a live action play, they use Sharon Leal. Why is this? I mean, obviously, it's about Martians, the Moors. Alias Megan Moors. Do you not see this? Moors. This is not a joke. I'm not playing about this. I'm dead serious. This is your history being told in front of you. When Steven Spielberg said that, you know, George Lucas needs to come out and say that he got the designs from Darth Vader, from Marvin the Martian, he's saying, we know that we encode black culture and history into our comics and our films. So it's okay for you to say that you were inspired from me portraying a black person in my film that you happen to get inspired from and create Darth Vader and using a black actor, black voice actor. Also, he was in the costume and he's wearing all black. They're telling you once again. Y'all know the history behind that. What do you think Star Wars is about? As I just talked about the cosmic war. You had a war between black and white in Mars. With DC Comics, they talk about the difference between green Martians and white Martians. Now, with white Martians, what are white Martians? Those are, oh yeah, your cone heads. And they have cone head skeletons. They have the skulls. This is not a joke. I'm not playing about this. I'm not playing about this at all. And if you've seen a cone head movie, you know the powers they have in a movie. With Marvin the Martian, he doesn't even have a mouth because he speaks with his mind. He speaks telekinesis, telep telepathy. You feel me? That's how he talks. They're letting you know that because you don't see his mouth move. They're talking about different levels of mind control and mind power right in front of y'all faces. You know? So my thing is, if you really research history and also... Miss Martian is in this show, I think show or movie that they have called Supergirl. And in Supergirl, guess what? Guess what, buddy? Guess what? Elongated skulls for Marvin the Martian. Marvin Manhunter. That's what I meant. Manhunt. Martian Manhunter. And Miss Martian. They both have elongated skulls. And guess what? They have what? Oh, yeah, you guessed it. Full lips. You know, you see the features. And they're green. Looking like a few goddesses that the, Do you know, gods and goddesses that the Dogon tribe mentioned. You feel me? Looking like a couple of them. I'm just saying. No most. You feel me? Looking similar. So, and also, you know, related to the elongated skulls of, obviously, the skulls that were found in Peru. And also other places as well. 
This is your history in front of you. I see a lot of things happening in the con quote unquote conscious community. I see people, you know what I'm saying, enticing people to talk about certain things and trying to get the credit for bringing things back. I see it. Trust me. I see inside of your mind. Trust me, bro. I know. Bookie Austin, you know who I'm referring to because you asked the question in the comment section. I'm not talking about that. Because I already know the schemes that they're trying to do. I'm ahead of that. We're talking about our history. So for those that don't know by now, green, blue is a reference to your skin. In cartoons, films, movies, animes, it's all in reference to your skin. Piccolo, the one dude that um, Goku fought in Dragon Ball Z after the Kid Buu series was over, you feel me? Him. They're talking, and he's dressed more. He's dressed like a more. I'm done. I'm done. He's dressed like a more, bro. Dressed like a more. This is ancient, by the way. And for those that don't know, this is nothing to be praised. I mean, it's just knowledge. I just view it as knowledge. I don't view it as like no ego boost or no shit like that because I know the truth behind this. It's not honorable what these Martians did when they came to Earth. It's not honorable. They were interdimensional, but they weren't the only ones. Y'all don't get history, bro. There were so many people, so many different races. There's there's so many dimensions. You think limited. You feel me? Y'all think limited. They, these textbooks tell y'all to think limited. Way deeper than that. Way deeper. And honestly, in that spiritual realm, they know. They know. And I All right, so I'm going to be reading from this article from Leroy D., Published February 5th, 2016, almost three years ago. Five reasons the Martian Manhunter is a black superhero. Just think, one year from now, Justice League Part 1 will be in theaters. Several long-term fans have voiced their dissatisfaction in the replacement of former original co-founder Martian Manhunter with former Teen Titan Cyborg. Some even claim that the change was made for political correctness to add a black character to the roster. My opinion of that? Of course not. Martian Manhunter was already a black character. Okay, I see. This is where I just lost you. But he's not black, you idiot. I can hear you saying he's green. That is also true. But what if I made five points to argue that DC Comics has secretly hid a black character in a green-skinned Martian right under your nose? Five. Only non-white guy on the original team. It's pretty much a staple of every superhero to have a token black character. Storm. But we have to remember that Justice League was created in the 1960s, at the height of the civil rights movement and when race relations were reaching a fever pitch. At the same time, if you have seven characters in one story, you want to make them as individual as possible. You have a woman with Wonder Woman, so since the other characters are white, why don't we have another character, a different color to stand out? I know what you're thinking. So does that mean the thing in the Incredible Hulk or Black 2? No, I'm not saying that. I'll let someone else say that. Remember that Ben Grimm and Bruce Banner are still human. They're not comfortable at any other state other than their human form. Martian Manhunter, on the other hand, is more comfortable in his Martian form and pretends to be human just to blend in. The biggest difference is Martian Manhunter isn't just a different color than the other members of Justice League. He's also a different race, too. So, look, I want to speak on this for a little bit. They're talking about race relations in the 1960s. Where white men were, you know, they didn't realize yet that the Jew had stabbed them in their back yet, you feel me? But they were mad that, you know, um, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and just a lot of these people were being, you know, not Malcolm X, but Martin Luther King was definitely getting put on, on a pedestal. And white women were looking up to do like, you know, um, just admiring him. You know, you have to understand, too. If somebody was to come out in 2018 sounded like Martin Luther King with that voice, there would be memes. There would be all types of things just not clowning it, but just admiring it like his voice is to start a war. But instead of his voice being used for war, he could use his voice for war. Martin Luther King, y'all don't even understand what I'm saying. That voice and how he spoke, that's how he really preached. I have the day when I just like really like that. You feel me? That's a deep thing within itself. It captured a lot of people's attention. The power in which he spoke, but he was speaking peace towards the end of it. You feel me? 
and imagine them putting a black character on here. They was killing people in the streets. There was riots. There were race riots in certain cities in America where people were killed and, you know, just all types of things going on. The KKK, which was started by, you know, y'all know, bro. Y'all know who it was started by, bro. You feel me? That JDL chapter in South Carolina along with Albert Pike, Freemason branch. You feel me? I mean, I know. But, you know, them putting a black character on this original team would have been crazy. Why is that nigga up there? You feel me? It would have been hell. And what you have to realize about DC Comics and Marvel and a lot of these places is that the writers, they're plugged in when it comes to the knowledge of the black man. They're plugged in. Oh, they know. You feel me? They know how deep the history goes. So when they put you up there, they have to disguise you during this era. And it still continued. You feel me? It still continued of them hiding your history in front of you. Because they understand us on that cosmic level. So they're not the racist type. The creators of these comics. That's why black people love them. Why you think black? I'm not. I'm not a fan of this shit. Honestly, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm not a fan of DC Comics, Marvel, or any of that. But I understand why black men. You feel me? Like I know a lot of black men that's into this stuff. Older ones. You feel me? Dudes that was in their 40s. I got cousins that was into this type of stuff. Instead of being the gangbanger type. You feel me? This is that other black man. I understand why they like this shit. You feel me? But I'm not into it. But I do understand. It. Because it's subtly, you know, telling you about your history. And the capabilities that you were able to do in the ancient past. That's all it's telling you, you know. So I'm going to move on to number four. Assume the identity of a black superhero in the 90s. Remember the death of Superman story arc? Of course you do. A lot of people ask, where were the bigger heroes like Wonder Woman, Batman, because I'm sure Batman would have been a big help with Doomsday. Or Martian Manhunter. Well, what if I told you Martian Manhunter was there? See the black su superhero in this pic? His name is Bloodwind. Hate to spoil a 20-year-old story, but that's actually Martian Manhunter in disguise. Why was he so useless against Doomsday? Because Doomsday exploded a car on his face and the fire made him useless. It was supposed to be some shocking plot twist, but since no one cared about Bloodwind, no one cared about the plot twist. 3. Media outside comics always cast a black actor. Martian Manhunter's first major appearance outside of comics is from Justice League on the Cartoon Network. His voice actor, Carl Lumley, of Alias fame. Okay, one black actor. Just a coincidence, right? Okay, what about Young Justice? Kevin Michael Richardson, also a black voice actor. Smallville, Phil Morris. I don't watch Supergirl, but I'm hearing Martian Manhunter is on there too. Wait, who's playing him? David Harewood. I could stop there, but almost every time he has a secret identity in the cartoons, it's all, almost always a black identity. On Justice League Doom, his co-workers even throw him a birthday party. Come on now, bro. Come on now, man. Come on now, bro. I mean, I, I just, you know, <laughs> need I go on? Need I go on? I have to. Because there's a lot more. It's always a lot more. A lot more. Pun intended. Two. Currently has a black secret identity in the new 52. In Martian Manhunter's current series, he's dropping the Detective John Jones persona. And has actually adopted another. Which is a black FBI agent named Daryl Wilson. A la Thor and Donald Blake. He also has another persona of a tap dancing green Martian named Mr. Biscuits, but let's not go there. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Biscuits. But nah, you know, you already know what that is, bro. You know, they got to take shots. You feel me? It's, it's part of the, you know, it's part of the job, bro. You know, but obviously it makes it more apparent who they talking about. You know what I'm saying? Who are the Martians? You have to understand that Mars was desolate. You know, the um the Earth was going through a transference. 
I mean, not the Earth. Yes, it actually was. But Mars was, you know, it was dying. It was dying. It was becoming uninhabitable for the people there. So, you know, the intelligent ones found a way to get to Earth. Portals, interdimensional things, energy harnessing, um, you know, some deep stuff. I mean, those that know, you know, you know. The ley lines... Where you think all this shit comes from. Earth wasn't taking advantage of that at first. It was some advanced people who put these, you know, megalithic pyramids. And pyramids are places that focus electromagnetic energy. Ley lines of the earth. They set that up. A lot of the stuff that you see, you know what I'm saying, the great wonders of the world were built by these people. The Moors, the Martians. They don't want you to know that, though. They built them up for energy. You know what I'm saying? Natural resources of Earth. And this is what the people are... My, you know, just the people in power now. Why do you think they spray the sky so much? Why do you think they pollute the water? They don't ever want you to get to that point. That's the whole point. And who do they target the most? You know who they have to target the most. They're always telling our story in front of us. Are you paying attention though? One, let's face it, we've seen this before. Panthro, Piccolo, Destro, Jazz from Transformers, etc. Even though these characters don't identify with a race, fans have always considered these characters black characters. Jazz in the Transformers movie was voiced by Eddie Winslow. Break dances during his introduction. Michael Bay thinks racism is hilarious and is the first Autobot in the movie to die. I don't think that's a coincidence. Some critics have even accused the new TMNT movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, of making Raphael the Black Turtle. Keep in mind, I don't see this as a negative. Panthro was always my favorite Thundercat, but I never really understood why I just identified with him and never questioned it. That's what I'm talking about with these DC Comics and Marvel stuff, you feel me? Similar to now watching Star Trek, the, Kil the Klingons were always my favorite. Now on the other end of the spectrum, there's also Mudflap skids and jar jar binks but let's keep this article positive shall we so that's my case for including martian manhunter with the same likes of spawn blade and black panther ah 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 i could have also added that he comes from a society that was destroyed because of differences between his race and the white martians instead of seeing eye to eye but i think i'll quit while i'm ahead nah you should have kept going bro I'm just playing. I'll take it from here. Shout out to bro for that article. You feel me? Shout out to him for that. Because I was doing research on Miss Martian and Martian the Manhunter and ran across his article. And I was like, whoa, perfect. Got to do it like in extreme detail and lay it out there for the people because a lot of people don't even read. So, And I want to talk about this as well. For all of those that love anime cartoons and, you know, were you really paying attention to your children's cartoons? Of course not. They were showing you your history in front of you. They were telling you about what you were. Not just on the Moorish America level, but the Moorish Mars level. The phases. The crescent moon with the five-pointed star. It's not Islam. Don't get that confused with Islam. You think a star and a crescent moon is just for one religion? One religion out of a whole quote-unquote solar system, but a sky of unlimited potential, really? That tells you that religion is to bind, to keep you closed-minded. To keep you closed-minded, they put it all in the cartoons, movies. They show you them. This is from Naruto, SpongeBob, a lot of places. You feel me? And it's not even a Freemason thing. It's not even that. It's deeper than that. They know this. It's about magic. It's about energy. To be truly awakened. 
So, you know, I could have talked about the Star Child School found in Copper Canyon, Mexico, with red fibers embedded in the brain on the inside and outside of the skull. You see red fibers. They don't know what it is. I mean, they do, but they can't tell you. Red fibers. Hmm. Mars is what? Oh. Okay. But, you know, there's all types of species that existed. And still do. world is not as limited as you think. Nowhere near that. Broaden your horizon. I wouldn't even say horizon. You know where horizon comes from. Heru. Horus. Same thing over and over again. I ask for individuals just to be aware. Do research. Because I'm doing mine. You know? I mean, it's all coming together, you know? This is something that's leading up to something else in the near future. Because this information wouldn't even be presented in this way if it just didn't add up. It wouldn't even make sense to this level. So, with that being said, like, comment, dislike. Peace.